older person that said years ago about a dot of knowledge. He came to my classroom one time and he put a little dot on the board. And he said, uh, he made a little small dot. And he said, this is how much I know. I don't know very much. And uh, he had been, you know, in his late 70s at that time. And the ceremonial drums in the Medewin Medicine Lodge. He had been there a long time. And uh, he proposed to start talking. But he said he didn't know very much. He just had a little, little bit to say is all that he knew. But he said some people, though, he said, they had this big, giant dot of knowledge. That's probably too small to represent what they think that they know. He said when their head gets so filled up like that, he said you can't get no new knowledge because they know all there is to know. We've always run across many people like that. But he said if you always have just a little dot of knowledge, just a little small, he said your mind is always open to new knowledge. You always know to hear things, and that's one of the <clears throat> parts of the Medewan Lodge, again, is seeking knowledge, but also to live a long life and a good life and a healthy life. So seeking that knowledge about the world around you. So I just shared a little bit of that. I have managed to learn uh, my 56 years you know, on this uh, earth here. And I'm going to share a little bit of that uh, with you this afternoon. When we think about this sense of empowerment and cultural self-confidence and about uh, who we are and how we see each other, the things that we do to embrace that and empower that. I guess one of the things when you think about, you know, for myself here, I'm thinking about, you know, being a, a judge here on Bad River for 25 years. And uh, being a judge here for 25 years, I was working at Lac de Flambeau, and the chief judge here, Irvin Sue here, and some of you know him, and if you know, you know Irvin, you know, he has a story for everything too. And uh, I see him in Lac de Flambeau, and he approached me, and he said, why don't you uh, think about being a judge? I said, I'm, uh, I'm too young to be a judge, I never thought about being a judge, and he said, why don't you? And he said, I don't need that. He said, I was joking around, and so I figured he was just joking around, and he brought it up again. And uh, so he said, why don't you do that? So I did do that. I did put that in there, and they did the nomination, and the tribal council then voted for me to be on the tribal to be a tribal judge at that time. So in these last 25 years, I have seen the court evolve in a lot of different settings, and specifically here on Bad River. And so I've seen it evolved, and I've seen how the community has looked at it, and also in other tribal communities, and seen how it has evolved. And we talk about the issue about sovereignty, and taking a look at what is sovereignty, and taking a look at the, how it parallels with treaty rights. and. And it has a sense of empowerment, uh, the individual sovereignty as individuals. And we're starting to see more and more of that. And the tribal courts have, are part of the process of taking a look at you know, the tribal courts and all the decisions that have gone on. And tribal courts are, at least at a point now, people see tribal courts much differently today in 2009 than they did in 1985. You know, they have evolved on a much greater, and people look at the court differently too. And so we've taken on more responsibilities in, in tribal court. And that has to do with our growth, you know, how we feel about ourselves and our ability to do things on our own, and our ability to be able to make our own decisions while having the, so the surrogate parent come in, which is basically the Bureau of Indian Affairs, you know, to run our affairs, basically that we can start to do this ourselves. With Indian self-determination, we start coming into play. The tribes basically can make their own determination about where they're going to go and what they're going to do. It also spills over to a lot of other different areas. As we start to feel more comfortable about ourselves as tribal people, we start to be able to believe that we can do other different things too. We start to see things. And I think when you take a look at the sovereignty and the cultural self-confidence, we no longer just sort of look at our toes and kind of walk meekly. That you start to be able to look around and start to say, you know, there are many things that I can do. There are many things that we can do. And you go ahead and try those particular things. And you start to see things when you need to work on. And that has been happening in the last 40 years.